Hey, you know, um, for those of you who are here this morning, don't shut off. God has a new word for you. Or actually, a reminder of the word that was spoken this morning. This morning I shared about what I believe God is saying for a word in this season. I, I, the word that God keeps speaking to me about is divine productivity, about being fruitful, about multiplying, increasing, and not decreasing. That's a word that God's been sitting with me in the last little while, and I've been sitting pondering because as a ministry, as Glory Release Ministries, we have a vision. And that vision is gatherings where the body of Christ is brought together, released in their giftings to see revival, glory, transformation come in the nation and in the nations. That's the Glory Release Ministries vision. Glory Release Ministries, for those of you who don't know, is the overriding arch of ministry. <laughs> There's Glory Release Church, there's Schools of the Spirit, there's training and equipping, there's mentoring, there's missions, but it all comes under that sort of banner, gatherings where the body of Christ is brought together, released in their giftings to bring revival, glory, transformation, basically. Transformation that crosses gender, uh, nationality, everything, crosses everything, because that's who God was. That's what he did. He crossed into every sector of society. And if we can only function out of our one society or out of the peer groups that we have, then we're actually not moving in revival transformation. Because I should be able to minister to a child. I should be able to minister to somebody of a different culture. I should be able to minister across to whoever God brings in front of me, right? I should be able to minister and meet the need of whoever God puts in front of me. So that's the vision of Glory Release Ministries, is to raise a bride up, released in their giftings, to meet the need. Because practice hospitality is meeting God's people in need, right? And that need can be anything, and so when God keeps talking about productivity and fruitfulness and that we should be increasing and not decreasing, and if we look at the scriptures, Genesis 1:28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. It's a mandate from the Lord. It's a vision, directive and mandate from God right from creation, right through to Matthew 28, 20, go make disciples of all nations. I've given you all authority, now go and do the work. So this is a vision and a directive and a mandate throughout scripture for us to be fruitful, multiply and increase on the earth. Yes? Good, so are we doing it? Great. Oh, well, that's the end of the sermon then. Because actually, if we were doing it, God wouldn't give me the word to preach it. Would he? If we were doing it, God wouldn't give me the word to preach it. Because why would he preach and bring a message of what we're already doing? Because he always goes from glory to glory. He expands us, right? So there's always more. We may be doing it to a measure, but the measure to which we do, there is always more. Otherwise, we're not growing in the Lord. So that vision is a glory release ministries, but it's not. And, and so I'm praying and saying, God, what's the, what's the vision for glory release church? And this is what he gave me to increase, be fruitful, multiply, and not decrease. Okay. Because it says in Jeremiah 29, 5, build houses, settle down, plant gardens, and eat what they produce. Marry, have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons, and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. And I found it really interesting that God said, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, 
you too will prosper. How many of us here are praying for our city? How many of us are praying for our nation? Because actually if we seek and pray and bless our nation, we too will be blessed. Thank you, darling. Do you see, he says it also, seek the peace. So first, your mandate is to increase and multiply, not decrease. Second, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you. And John 15, this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to me, my disciples. You see, we can always talk the talk, but can we walk the walk? We're good at talking the talk, but can we walk the walk? Because if we walk the walk, we will see increase, we will see multiplication, we won't see decrease. Because that's God's call and blessing over our lives. And yet, I know for myself, and for many of us, there are times in our lives where we feel we're, like we're, we, we're decreasing. I don't know about you, but I feel that sometimes. I feel like I'm putting all this labor and all this work, and, and, and it's like a mother giving birth to a baby. All this stress and striving and pain. Ugh, and nothing comes because I haven't yet seen the promise of which I'm laboring, right? Because we believe by faith. And to believe by faith is to labor for something. It's to labor for the promise. But the promise hasn't come yet. And yet God, you said to increase, multiply, not decrease. Ah, it feels like we're decreasing, we're not increasing. And so I have to sit there and I have to seek the mysteries of God. Because our fruitfulness can be measured. You know, in banks these days, they've got to produce in order to get a pay rise. It's a work ethic. It's a, it's a striving to achieve something. Now, that's not what it is in Christ. There's a difference because he wants us to increase and multiply and be blessed. Not that we're out to get something, but actually because that's who our God is. He wants us to prosper. And so when we're feeling like we're not prospering and we're decreasing, and we're not getting the promise that we're laboring for, then we need to ask the questions. Because this is where the mysteries of heaven are found. Am I growing in the fruit of the Spirit? Do you see, am I growing? Am I growing to the place where actually people eat of the fruit that I have because it's not a thorn bush? Because you see, if I'm constantly angry and constantly irritated, why would anybody want to eat of my fruit? If I'm constantly stressed, why would anybody want to eat that? But if I'm constantly full and overflowing of joy and peace and, and just ooey gooey goodness, <laughs> then you're going to want to eat that. If the aroma of Christ that's flowing out of me is so... Oh, Jim got some aftershave. Well, I gave it to him for Father's Day because I gave up because <laughs> he always had this cheap stuff and... And I, you know, it doesn't really do it for me. And so I, I went and I bought some really, really expensive aftershave. Never done it before in my life. Probably will never afford to do it again. But I brought this $200 bottle of aftershave. Not duty free. <laughs> I never do that. But, you know, there's something about that aftershave. You know, when a man walks past, I don't know about you, woman, but when a man walks past and he smells good, I remind myself I'm wearing a wedding ring. I remind myself that my husband has a $200 bottle of aftershave sitting on the bedroom door thing and he's not using it. I remind myself 
myself. And many of us are like that bottle of aftershave. We have that aftershave sitting on the cupboard, but we're not using it. But do you see what I'm saying? We have access to a $200 bottle of aftershave or perfume. But when we leave it on the shelf and don't use it, then it's not going to be productive. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So, you know, if you want to be productive, use the aftershave. If you want to produce fruit and have offspring, have the aftershave. There's a good word there. But you see, I have to measure it. And it can be measured. There is spiritual fruit that can be measured. There is physical fruit that can be measured. Am I making disciples? Are lives changing around me? Are the things that God has called me to do producing fruit? Are signs, healings, wonders, and miracles following me? Because actually signs, wonders, healings, and miracles follow those who believe. It's like that aroma and, you know, all of a sudden we're all following. I tell you what, next time he wears that aftershave, you'll all notice it. (laughs) Do you know? Because... Are people following after what I carry? Not me, but you. Because we're called to measure our fruit. Because that's where seeking the mysteries of heaven are found. That's the mysteries revealed when I start asking the questions. And if I look at the next slide, there are things that hinder that fruitfulness. A, not putting on the aftershave. (laughs) Seeing it's a bit of a theme coming tonight. Did you put on the aftershave? No, because I would have smelt it. Um, busyness. Commonly heard, I'm too busy. I didn't have time to prepare. Too many distractions. And for some, no vision. And so therefore you're not aiming for anything. And when you're not aiming at anything, you say yes to everything. And when you say yes to everything, you don't say no to anything. And so you wander aimlessly. Another thing is entertaining the enemy. So we entertain offense, we entertain (laughs) discouragement, we sit and we dine with them, and we dwell with them. We sit and we entertain the things that don't build us up in the Lord. These are things that hinder our fruitfulness. But in John 15 too, it says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Do you see, and sometimes he only needs the snippers, but other times he needs a jolly good chainsaw. <laughs> Because there are things that are so stubborn in our lives that we won't let go of. But actually, God wants us to be fruitful. It's not to harm us that he prunes us. It's not to cause us damage. It's so that we are fruitful. It's so that we fulfill what God came here for. Do you remember the meerkat's word that I had at the end of last year? The blog's out there if you want it, if you don't know it. For those of you who who haven't heard it, I had a dream where I saw, I was in the back seat of someone's car, and there were these beautiful meerkats, the cute ones. And uh, they were on the side of the road, and people kept picking them up and putting them in their car. And I said, no, no, don't do that. It looks good, but it will hurt you. But they still pick them up. Do you see, meerkats look cute, but man, they can kill. They can kill. They they eat the snake of poison. No, the poison of snakes. So if their bite gets on a hold of you, you'll die. But they look cute. They look cuddly. And the word of the Lord at the time was, there are things that look good 
There are things that actually look, you know, really good and cute, but actually in the end it leads to death. You see, for many of us, we're so busy, we're picking up all these things, but we're not being productive, and in the end it's leading to death in areas of our lives. Once where we had joy, we have no joy because we're too busy and we're too tired. Once where we walked in peace, we're not doing that anymore because I'm walking in stress instead of peace because I've got too much going on. So what does it mean for us as a people and individually and as a church? I have some homework sheets down here because there's no point me preaching if you merely listen to the word and do nothing with it. It's like looking at yourself in the mirror and forgetting what you look like. So I've done a little handout and it's a little handout on evaluating your own spiritual and, and personal fruit. Are there things in your life that may need to be cut off? How can things be done differently? Am I growing? What are, the, what are the default words that come out of my mouth when somebody asks me to do something? So it's there if you want to take it home. Because what I find is people have words that I hear all the time come out of their mouth. I can't do it. Why can't you do it? Because actually in Christ I can do all things. I'm too busy. I'm too unprepared. Why, why, why? Maybe you need to learn self-control. Maybe you need to learn time management. You see, search the mysteries of heaven to know why. I don't know how many of you have seen that, that glass bowl where they put rocks in and then stones and then sand. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because we forget and we fill our lives with all the sand and, and the priorities which are our rocks can no longer fit in because we're filled with answering texts or, or messaging somebody or watching TV, things that actually don't matter. So the things that do matter, we never get done. So what has God called you to do? And are you moving towards it? Self-evaluate. Because God never makes us busy. He never gives us more than we can handle. We give it to ourselves. <clears throat> what I see for the church, so that's individually. Take it home. Sit and ask the Lord on it. What I see for the church and what I keep hearing, every time we go on a Tuesday and we work out what's happening the following Sunday is we don't have enough people. We don't have enough people. And so Jim and I will come and the others will come and Janine will come and often we'll be doing three jobs on a Sunday. Like today for me, I preach twice. I set up the thing down there. I ran around finding all the things that still weren't quite sorted that should have been sorted because areas weren't being done well. But you see, if we're looking after our area, we want to be people who do it well. We want to be proud of what we do. Not because we do it unto man, but we do it unto God. And so if I do a half-hearted job, like my preaching, you're only going to get a half a meal because I haven't had time to give you the rest. You know, you turn up at my house, I've invited you for dinner, but I actually don't even have the entree ready and I don't have the mains ready, I only have dessert and I made that three days ago. How would you feel? If you came to my house, I invited you for dinner and actually, oh, I'm sorry, I've been too busy, there's no food for you. Oh, yeah, you would. You wouldn't come again because you didn't get fed the last time. You wouldn't come again because actually my word was meaningless. 
I invited you for dinner, but I gave you no food. I said I'd ring you, but I didn't do it, so you don't actually value to me. There's no value. Do you see? Because we value what we put our, our life into, we value. Those big rocks is actually what we value. Where we put our money is what we value. How we spend our time is what we value. So when you come to my house and I've invited you for dinner but I have no food, I actually don't value you. I don't consider you worthy to spend my time on. And so as a body, what I see is we don't have enough people to put on a meal for two services. So I'm cutting off something so that one service is fruitful and has enough food than two that barely have enough to feed anybody. Do you see what I mean? I see a body growing and I'm thrilled about that. I see a body maturing and that is awesome. But I see a body where there's still so much lack in regards to resources. You know, we've been praying, Lord, send us the workers. Send us the workers. But still there are people who will come and eat and partake of the food, but actually don't contribute to the table. Do you see, we, didn't, we, we weren't invited to the supper without, you know, you never come to my house without bringing something to bring. Or do you just come and eat and walk away? You see, I have a body of people that are learning what it is to walk in kingdom, which is good because kingdom is one of authority. It is one of order. It is one of structure. But I see a body that actually I think... You two said it when you shared testimony about the priority. They were dedicated. They got $30 a month, and yet they were out evangelizing all the time, bringing them into the house. Hey, what you shared in your testimony was one of commitment and passion that brought in the harvest to the food that was already ready. Do you see, we're very lazy in our, in our worldview. We're very lazy. We're very self-centered. Aren't we? When you go to nations like this and you see people preaching the gospel, was not getting hardly anything. And we won't even preach the gospel unless we get paid for it. Do you know what I mean? But God's our provision. And this is not to put put guilt or condemnation, but it's a reality that we're having to look at. Because if we believe by faith people are coming and yet we don't see them coming by faith without action is dead. All the prophets need to be stoned because actually they're bringing an untrue word because God said the people are coming. Why are they not coming? So I've got to explore it. But until they come, until I see we have enough food on the table, we're going to go down to one service. Because we need to be able to have rosters of a worship team that are able to sing and carry it when we've got nothing else. Do you know, we need to have people who can do media. We had Rebecca today doing two jobs. We've got Esther doing three right now on the back and Jason doing sound. We need teams of sound. We need teams for what God has said about this. We need teams that can carry this. Hey. And so I need you to pray, but not only just pray, I need you to act. What does it look like? (laughs) 
So we're going to move down to one gathering as of the end of May. Jim and I go to Africa after next week's service with Jan. So we're away for a month. But from the beginning of June, we're going to do only morning services. And I know that's going to affect some of you who, who come for the night service. But I had to make a decision. <laughs> it was a hard decision. But you see, most of the ones of you who come at night go to other churches in the morning. So you're being fed. You don't need two tables to eat from. That's gluttony. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're contributing to the table. But if you eat at one and eat at another and don't contribute in either, that's gluttony. This, this, is, this is quite a different word than this morning, isn't it? <laughs> so what I'm saying to you is, God wants us to be productive, increase, and not decrease. He wants us to multiply. So I really encourage you to multiply, to look at your harvest, to look at your, your productivity, your fruitfulness, and really examine your fruit. I have to do that. I have to do that. Am I preaching with power? Am I preaching prepared? Am I preaching knowing the word, not just speaking? Am I living the word? Because I can't preach something I can't live if it's going to have power. I have to live the word for it to be a living word. So if we're not moving in power, then therefore perhaps we're not actually living what we preach. If we're not seeing those lives change and want what we have, why am I not seeing that? So I want to encourage you. Can I have the, the team up here, please? Is this an encouraging word? Tell me this is encouraging. Because it actually feels quite... <gasps> <laughs> there, there's some showstoppers in there, I think. Yes. You know, I preached a similar word this morning, although it's different. And I walked in the building this, morning, this evening, and I thought, oh... What did I hit this morning? Because do you know what I walked into? Negativity, criticism, judgment, boof, boof, boof. And so it's like, okay, what did I stir up this morning? You know, I can always tell when the word has been powerful because I go home utterly exhausted because I've been hitting something in the spirit the whole time. So the word this morning was powerful. <laughs> but you have to watch what gets stirred up when the word that comes with a sword reveals things. You've got to watch it because whatever comes out is the fruit of the root. So if you walk out after a message of mine and you're judging and you're critical and, and you're going to town, oh, what's in here? Oh, did I touch a sore spot? Well, good. Good. Because he wrote that. He said, I'm pleased I did it so that you came into what you're supposed to. So I pray protection over each one of you. But when it comes up, let it come up. And be honest with yourself. Because that's the fruit God wants you to have and search the mysteries on. Why am I reacting that way? Why did I respond that way? Sarah was only preaching the word of God. Why did I react like that? Why did I not want to come near her anymore? Do you know, whatever it is, is it, am I preaching the word of God? Because it will stir up. If it's truly the word of God, God will reveal things to you. Let him reveal it. 
But don't just reveal it. Let him take you into everything he has for you. We have a song that I've asked these guys to sing because of the chorus on it. Can we have the words up, Esther? Thank you. Is laying down all lesser things for greater gain. Do you see? Because when you look at the fruit, there are areas in our lives that actually, God, that wasn't what you called me to. This is what you called me to. God, this is what you said, but I'm doing this. And we've got to search out why we're doing this when God called us to this. Thanks, guys. I oh, know three wherever you. Um, we're just going to start with verse three. His spirit is my present help. I feel lost all by myself. He resurrects. He sanctifies. His power makes it mine. Jesus, He took my place in divine exchange. Hallelujah, praise is mine. Now I will live by faith for the one who saves. He gave all to give me life. Jesus, no lesser things for greater gain. He is alive inside of me. I lay down all lesser things for greater gain. He is alive inside of me. I lay down all lesser things for greater gain. He is alive inside of me. I lay down all lesser things for greater gain. He is alive. Jesus, He took my place in divine exchange. Hallelujah, grace is mine. Now I will live by faith for the one who saves. He gave all to give me life. Jesus, He took my place in divine exchange. Hallelujah, grace is mine. Now I will live by faith for the one who saves. He gave all to give me life. I lay down all lesser things for greater gain. He is alive inside of me. I lay down all lesser things for greater gain. He is alive inside of me. I lay down all lesser things for greater gain. He is alive inside of me. You know, we've had to lay down some things in order to be more fruitful. I've laid down School of the Spirit. I've laid down Labor Weekend of Worship. All fruitful things. But I've laid them down so that when we go to Africa, we are prepared and sharp and ready to preach a word that will bring transformational change. I've laid those things down so that when we preach on a Sunday, we are coming full of fire. Do you see? Because I want to be so full with the things that God has and not so emptied out with the things God doesn't have. And so I pray that God will reveal those things to you, and reveal the, the default words. And so, Father, I just pray for each one of us, Lord, that you would reveal the state of our fruit, that you would show us, Lord, and Lord, that we would lay down, if need be, 
or that we would learn to say no or that we would learn to say yes. Father, whatever it is, I pray you would teach us and you would lead us by your spirit for those things that you have for us so that whatever we put our hand to, we will see is blessed and multiplied and increased. Father, we pray for our city. Father God, that it will prosper. Lord God, we pray for our nation, that it will prosper. Father, as, and as we have Anne here, Father, we pray for Andrew and Anne. Father, that they will prosper as they lead this city by your faith, by, by your example, by your truth. Father God, we pray for them and we bless them. But Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will bless each one of us as we seek and search out the mysteries of what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Alana, she's all yours. Thank you for listening to this message. If you would like to know more about this ministry, see us at our website, glorireleaseministries.org.